Hey guys, this is Mr. Roxy coming at you live from Lake Worth Beach in Florida. Today it is Saturday, it is November the 20th. And what we are going to do today is take a look at five energy stocks. So in the last video that I made, we looked at uh, five miners, uh, specifically iron ore and uh, related type of uh, mining potential investments that are undervalued. And what we're gonna do now is go back to uh, being uh, me being Mr. Roxy and uh, take a look at some of these um, energy stocks. And uh, in particular, let me just take my video down. Uh, in particular, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at uh, Petrobras, Philip 66, Marathon, Devon Energy and Occidental. Now, of course, we've made many, many videos and we've had lots of conversation about Occidental, uh, but let's see how it stacks up against the other four. And then um, if I were to, uh, uh, you know, sort of pull the trigger on a new addition to my portfolio, which one of these would I pick, if any? So uh, in uh, no particular order, really, uh, except for Oxy, maybe on the left is the one that we've talked about the most by far, uh, you know, in the time that we've um, had this community channel going. Let's compare Oxy to Marathon Petroleum, Philip 66, Petrobras, and Devon Energy. So Petrobras, for me being a US tax person, is an ADR, which is an American Depository Receipt. Uh, receipt is also a slightly different type of um, uh, potential investment for me because this would be an emerging markets integrated oil company uh, as opposed to the um, other more US uh, companies that I'm much more familiar with. So um, if we look at the technicals very briefly and uh, you know I, I've had a couple of people and uh, including Wilmo who uh, suggested that uh, if I'm not really interested in the technicals perhaps I shouldn't talk too much about them but I think there are people who are um, absolutely skilled at uh, technical analysis and chartists who uh, are members of our community. So I thought I'll in include the uh, sort of snapshot of the technicals anyway. What is interesting here is I'm looking at the stochastic. If it's greater than 80, it's overbought. Um, if you look at the stochastic score at the bottom here, none of them are overbought. So none of, none of them are over 80. The highest one being uh, Devon is only at 27. If it's less than 20, it's oversold. Uh, which means pretty much all four of the others, excluding Devon, according to the stochastic score, the 20 day raw stochastic are oversold. Um, from an alpha point of view, we know that negative weighted alphas mean a return below the benchmark. We have a couple here, Philip 66 and Petrobras. Uh, the others are positive. They've been outperforming the bench benchmark and they have positive weighted alpha, which are quite high, but none of them as high as Devon, which has significantly outperformed the benchmark in terms of its weighted alpha. So if we look at the performance of the five stocks uh, over different periods, um, a couple of things that sort of attract attention here, uh, two of them that have pulled back more than the others are Occidental over the last five days or so. Uh, I'm not sure exactly at what time on Friday I took the snapshot, so the actual pullback might even be greater than that. Uh, but these two, Philip 66 and Occidental, have certainly been the worst performance over the past five days. Of about over a month, one month period, Philip 66 has pulled back more than the, uh, the other four, even though you can see the pullback has been pretty much consistent. If we look at it over a slightly longer period of time for the people who are long and not necessarily day trading or getting in and out of positions on a regular basis, we can see that the energy stocks have performed really well. In particular, Oxy over a three month period is still up over 30% and Devon, look at that one, up over 60% over the three month period. The outlier here is Petrobras, which might be the cheapest of the bunch uh, at negative 4% over a three month period. How about over a six month period? Oxy is still up 15% over a six month period. Marathon just clinging on for dear life at uh, 2%. Philip 66, negative 18% over a six month period. So Philip 66 shareholders have been whacked, but maybe uh, now is a good time to get in. Um, Petrobras, kind of like Marathon, just uh, clinging on for dear life and look at Devon, it's outperformed everything else. Uh, I am going to take a closer look at uh, Petrobras on this one because this is what, on one stock where I may be uh, willing to pull the trigger and add some more to my existing position. Let's take a look at beta. So uh, beta measures market swings, a beta of, greater, beta of greater than one is a stock that moves more than the market over time. Right here, you can see the beta for all of them is positive. Uh, Devon, once again, being the outperformer with a beta of more than three. Uh, in terms of the actual uh, volume of, of trades going on in terms of uh, what's happening in the market, um, 
there's not uh, too much activity. I mean, there's been a pullback in energy, uh, but if you look at these companies in terms of their uh, production and sales, annual sales are all big, big numbers, right? Devon is actually the smallest of the lot um, and its annual net income, despite its great stock performance, is actually not that great. Uh, on the other hand, the annual net income for all of them are negative with the exception of Petrobras. On a PE-based rating system, Petrobras is the cheapest of the bunch right now with a PE of only four. Um, I've talked about PE quite often from a fundamentals point of view. PE is one of the first things I look at. Uh, the, um, the, the forward number on, on PE gives me an indication of how, how uh, sort of relatively speaking cheap the stock is. And um, if it's less than 15, I would definitely be interested. How about over a one year period, if we look at these stocks, the outperformer here, uh, once again, as I said, is Devon, the green line here. Uh, you can see that the trends, uh, the trajectory for these stocks are pretty much the same. And then suddenly Devon just spikes. That was after uh, the earnings that they announced last, which is a Q3 earnings. And the bottom uh, feeder over here, Petrobras, certainly the worst performer of the bunch and ending up sort of net negative here along with Philip 66. I put an arrow here next to Petrobras because this is actually a stock that I might be interested in adding to my existing position. Okay, quick snapshot on Petrobras. Uh, this is a sort of, uh, let's call it a semi super major, market cap 63 billion, uh, sitting nicely in the middle of the range. So nicely teed up for me to potentially do a buy. The PE is only three on a trailing 12 month basis massive dividend of a dollar a share, which at the current price of about 10 bucks is yielding 10% and short interest only two. So if there's only 2% of the float outstanding being sold short, and not too many people in the marketplace thinking Petrobras is going down, most people think it will be going up. Who exactly is Petrobras? Is Petróleo Brasileiro, probably screwing that up again, was Alito, I'm not sure. It's a uh, uh, you know, foreign language for me. The companies engaged in prospecting, drilling, refining, processing, trading, and transporting crude oil from production onshore and offshore oil fields and from shale and other rocks. As I said earlier on, it's an ADR. So I need to be aware of the fact that ADR fees for me as an American taxpayer uh, average approximately one to three cents. I do not have the ability to buy the regular common. I have to buy the ADR through the New York Stock Exchange if I buy this in my US trading account. How about a comparison to its peers? So um, on a valuation basis, its price earnings is super low. The uh, industry is currently trending at around 50 and Petrobras is less than three. The only two uh, ratios from a valuation point of view that is of any uh, consequence or meaning here is the price earnings and price to book. And we can see Petrobras is less than one compared to the end industry's 3.2. From a profitability point of view, this stock is a monster. The gross profit margin trailing 12 month basis, 45% compared to the industry's 33, but look what happens then. Operating profit is 56 compared to the industry's negative 15 and the net profit margin 34 compared to the industry's negative 2.75. Super profitable company compared to peers. Is it effective? It's return on equity over the past 12 months, trailing 12 months, 43%, the industry's negative 6%. Return on assets, 14%, and the industry is only at three. Return on investment, 16%, the industry is only at four. Financial strength, do they have money to pay their bills? The total debt to capital ratio is 46, the industry is 40, so they're pretty much on par, almost the same there. You will know by now, I always look at the quick ratio and I'm looking for a quick ratio of one or greater than one. Uh, Petrobras is just slightly uh, better than the industry at 0.91. I want to see it at one or greater than one. A quick ratio, as a reminder, means that it has enough current assets and uh, cash equivalents and cash to pay its uh, current liabilities, which are typically bills that are due within the next 30 days. Interest coverage, however, uh, makes me uh, feel a level of confidence because even though its quick ratio is less than one, the interest coverage on Petrobras right now is 2.24, which means that there is more than enough um, operating profit to uh, cover any interest payments that might be due. How about the sector as a whole? So we have been performing quite well. The energy sector, this green line over here, if you look at it on a year-to-date basis, it's outperforming the S&P 500 significantly. And that is despite uh, the recent pullback 
which obviously has hurt all our portfolios if you look at it from an unrealized gain point of view, especially over the last month. At uh, this period of the date year, uh, being October 19th for the past month, energy was still nicely chugging along, uh, doing better than the S&P 500, and then suddenly we crashed. As all things turned negative against energy, COP26 with all their garbage, uh, while they all fly around in their private planes and big yachts, telling us how to live our lives and cut our uh, carbon emissions. Uh, and then at the same time, obviously, you have the administration in the United States specifically with all guns blazing, trying to attack energy uh, while they charge their cell phones and drive around in 65 car motorcades and fly around on Air Force One with um, a few Hercules transport planes uh, in close proximity, uh, transporting the beast and all the cars that make up their motorcade. So hypocrisy that is off the charts, but yes, it impacts energy for sure. Uh, on a smart score, we're looking at Petrobras again here. Uh, Tip Ranks has uh, Petrobras rated eight, that's outperform. And the analysts collectively say it's a moderate buy, target price around $13.85, which is the median or the average. And uh, some analysts are saying it could be as high as $16. It's currently at uh, $10. So uh, based on the um, predictions here, the $13.85 gives you a potential 34.6% upside uh, on the stock. So, um, uh, you know, guys, this is sort of uh, where we're at. And this is uh, the five stocks. I am thinking of uh, pulling the trigger and adding some Petrobras to, uh, to my uh, portfolio. Just recently, about a week ago, I exited my position on General Electric, uh, which obviously is an industrial conglomerate. One of the reasons why I exited General Electric is because um, they announced that the company is going to split itself into parts. Uh, my GE position was up about, um, I think it was up about 18, 19%. And on the day that they made the announcement that GE was going to split into two companies, uh, I had an uptick of another 6% or so. It put me up about 25%. I exited the position, booked the profit, and uh, that cash is now available and waiting investment. Uh, I've been thinking of where to park, it, park uh, some of that cash. Um, this is not cash that I've earmarked for uh, potential positions in um, uh, Sabanye, Stillwater. Uh, that, that's uh, another portfolio that I'm looking at putting uh, a position into um, Sabanye and potentially also in Valle. And I know I'm not saying that correctly, but what the heck. Uh, but my GE cash could probably go into uh, Petrobras. Um, what do you guys think? If you prefer uh, any of the other uh, four to Petrobras, can you let me know? Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm not going to add to my oxy position right now. My cost base is low, it's only about 17. And uh, with the stock trading at like 29 bucks, uh, my oxy position is still very, very comfortable uh, in terms of where it's at right now. So I'm not going to add to that. I'm definitely not going to sell any. Uh, you know, I'll take a look at oxy again when it hits around $51 and then decide whether I should exit or, um, or do anything with that stock. So probably a, you know, another year, 18 months or so of Occidental. But in the meantime, I want to add something. And my pick here of the five that I shared with you is Petrobras. Let me know what you think of the comments. I look forward to hearing from you. Talk to you soon. Bye.